one. There's an old saying that says there are old climbers and there are bold climbers, but there are no old bold climbers. What they're saying is basically free soloists eventually die. Free solo climbing, it's probably one of the least common types of climbing, even though it's really the simplest type of climbing. You don't have a rope, um, you don't have a partner. You're climbing for a long distance, usually pretty high off the ground, only relying on yourself. I know what happens to the human body when it hits the ground from even 30 feet. That fear is embedded in me. Steph has found a way to marginalize fear. She's found a way to compartmentalize it. I started uh, base jumping because I started skydiving. And the reason I started skydiving was because I am so interested in this idea of fear. You ready? Yeah. Are you? I'm ready. It's not like I'm some fear ninja now and like nothing scares me <laughs> because I do these things that seem scary. It's just that I have some tools to try to function a little better when I'm scared. It's actually kind of how I met Mario. Because I had started skydiving, I started base jumping, I was flying wingsuits and um, he had come to Moab to fly the plane at the skydiving center. We got married. <laughs> we were doing a wingsuit flight together in Italy. And I had jumped first and he followed me. So when I landed, he wasn't there. And, you know, I've been wingsuiting long enough that when somebody goes missing in a wingsuit, it usually is the worst case scenario. Pretty quickly, my brain started to understand that he wasn't coming down. It's obviously one of the most devastating things that can happen to a person. And she was basically a newlywed. I started climbing pretty soon after he died, but it was kind of a question mark for me about flying wingsuits because that was so associated with losing Mario. And I thought, do I even, is that even gonna be a thing that feels good anymore? About four months after he died, it was winter, so I went down to Arizona. People said, hey, you know, we're gonna go to some canyons and do some wingsuit base jumps, do you wanna go? So I thought, yeah, I'll go and see. It was kind of a big moment for me, and I was really happy to be surrounded by friends. Jumping off the cliff and remembering the last time he was behind me and then he wasn't there anymore. It was a really intense moment. You know, it made me cry, but I also felt that I love flying and Mario loved flying and flying keeps me close to him in some way. And so it became a good thing instead of a bad thing. Visualization is a huge part. In my mind, I'm watching myself do every single move. She gets to this point where it's almost like she's sleepwalking. She likes to rehearse the jump a little bit in her mind. She's able to regulate her fear so easily and so well that it may be that she's able to transfer that to other emotions that she's feeling as well, like sadness or depression. That's something that could be really interesting to study in the future. Steph's chosen a life less traveled, and it's not an easy one. And she's been through a lot. She's, it's cost her a lot, but it's also given her the life that she really wants. We're inspired by people like Steph Davis because she really is awe-evoking. Just getting more comfortable with the idea of fear and what it means, that directly translates to life. You know, we all have these things that pop up every day and it's either really upsetting or really scary, seems like a really big deal. When you get more used to managing those feelings, little things don't ruffle you as much in life. And when the big things happen in life, you have better tools to deal with them.